Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. What do I have behind me? 2016 Lincoln MKZ and it's parked here because it has a parasitic draw. It's one of those intermittent ones where the battery dies overnight. Sounds familiar? <laughs> um, it's parked in the same spot as that uh, Honda Odyssey was because I can easily hook up a battery charger to keep the battery from getting wasted. So right now three amps, two amps, well I'll show you what it does. The car is asleep, I even latched the hood, that's closed, everything's fine. And uh, the customer said that first, you know, this happened a few times, and then you replaced the battery, it was fine for a couple of weeks. Then it happened again, you replaced the battery again. And now it's happening every other day. So I'm like, well, the, the more often it happens, the easier it'll be for me to diagnose this thing. So I think we got it to act up. So right now the battery charger, the Top Don Tornado 90,000, I have set at 12.7 volts. So that's to maintain regular, you know, vehicle off battery voltage. You want to recreate the symptoms without killing the battery. So you can see he's putting it about two amps, battery's fully charged. And the meter is connected in series. Now, right now it's down to 0.1 amps. But for a while there, for like 20 minutes, it was going up to 4 amps, back down to 1 amp, it would sit there for a little bit, back up to 4 amps, back to 1 amp, it would sit there for a little bit. So I want this car to time it how long it takes to go to sleep. These Fords are notorious for taking forever to go to sleep and they, <laughs> and they have the most parasitic draw problems. It's really uh, not a good combination for, for the diagnostician. Um, we have to recreate the problem, you know. Will it wake up overnight? I don't know. How do you monitor that? Hook up your Pico for, you know, on the long time base with a with an amp clamp maybe. But I want to see what it, the final draw here is. I don't know, maybe this is normal. Maybe the car will actually go to sleep right now. And everything will be perfect. So I'll check back in half an hour, see what the final draw is. You know, when I heard about the symptoms, I'm like, oh man, this is going to be impossible. Um, kind of like with that Honda Odyssey. Now with that one, <laughs> oh yeah, I scanned it for codes, nothing of interest, cleared them all out, let the car go to sleep. Um, we can scan it again tomorrow and see if anything interesting comes up, but there's no you know, module configuration lost air or something funky like we saw in the Lincoln MKC with the bad RTM module that wasn't going to sleep in. But that was acting up all the time. That module is just broken. And this one, it's too early to make a call. So we'll let it simmer. We'll be back. So it's been about an hour. We have 65 milliamps. Now some people might say that's okay, I say that's too much. We want to see less than 20. There is a module staying awake, I am sure of it. And look at this, 0 0.72, 0 0.73, and just a little while ago I saw this thing shoot up. Let's see if we can catch it. Boom! Three amps! And look how fast it drops now. 2.2, 2 2.1, 0.7, 0.4, back down to 65 milliamps. So there's a ghost. Something is not going to sleep. This is proof right here. Now, how do we go about chasing this down? <sighs> Same way we did with the other Lincoln. It's gonna take hours. We need to hook up a scope, look up a wiring diagram of the network 
layout, there's probably three networks, hook up our four channel scope and monitor the networks. And this thing, again, once you wake it up, we'll you know, stretch the leads out here, let it go to sleep and see which network the, uh, the problem is on. And then, only then, uh, we need access to the fuse boxes um, to see which modules are on which network start disabling the power to the appropriate modules. Uh, this is, uh, again, very time consuming. Would a dealer do anything about this? I, I really doubt it. They would be like, hey, there's no codes. Can't get it to act up, whatever. They probably don't even know how to use an ammeter. But the, these are the most time consuming diag uh, diagnosis procedures. At least this one is acting up, unlike the Honda BCM, which was even more intermittent, and it's been fixed for months now after we basically you know, unplugged it, plugged it back in, reprogrammed it, still running fine with the original BCM. This one, there's going to be a module that's not going to sleep. And out of 30 modules, first we have to narrow down which network isn't going to sleep. And then, and then you know, from, from there, write down the list of modules on that network. And uh, do the same procedure as the seven hour parasitic draw video. So. Um, probably continue this tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned. So Lincoln's in the shop. So here's the strategy. First, you want to manually latch, uh, latch the little door levers and put a piece of tape over the handle so you don't accidentally pull the handle and wake up the car. Uh, so right now I actually have a battery charger on it at 12.7 volts and I want to scan this thing one more time before we start our process. So key is on and the entire vehicle is green. We have absolutely no clues from the scanner. However, we want to take a picture of all of the present modules so we know exactly which ones are present on this vehicle. This is where you know, tools like the Think Tool Pros shine with the topology. This is fantastic. There are, well, let's see how many networks? One, two, three, four networks on here. Now, they're labeled high speed two, medium speed one, high speed one, and high speed three, and that actually matches the diagram. So, this is very powerful. So, I'm going to snap, take a snapshot of this page and this page since it has more modules than one page, which is ridiculous. Um, and that way we'll know exactly which ones are present on this vehicle. Then we'll unplug everything, unplug the scanner, let this thing go to sleep, have the meter on it, and I want to find a good place to put our scope on these networks. Remember on the other Lincoln, the 2017 MKC, Basically at the DLC, it was like a little gateway module, so we could plug in right there. I'm not sure about this model. We'll ta uh, have to take a look at the wiring diagram. So here we have the wiring diagram of the entire vehicle. So it's three pages. Here's our DLC connector. We can see two networks, pins 3 and 11, and then 6 and 14, come to the, right to the DLC. However, this vehicle has more than two networks. Because this gateway module, you can see there's high speed 3 can, high speed 2 can, high speed 1 can, and medium speed can. So four networks on this vehicle, just like the scanner showed, um, this gateway module, we need to get there so we can have four channels on all four networks. <clears throat> if we're at the DLC, we can only be on... Let's see here. High speed 1 can. That's pin 6 and 14. And then pin 3 comes to high speed 2 can. So those are the only two networks that are accessible from the DLC. Which is a shame. So we'll have to get to lower right side of steering column to get to all the networks easily. And, you know, from there, you can see this is the medium speed modules, the violet and gray. 
Then we have the high speed one, high speed two. Again, all medium speed stuff. High speed two. And this is high speed three instrument panel. Rear audio control module, telematics control unit, audio digital signal processing module. This will be fun. All right, so I got my in-series ammeter hooked up. Battery chargers on here maintaining 12.7 volts. My scope ground is hooked to this ground stud. And there's our 65 milliamps, and we're going to wait until it jumps up. Now, four channels. And without a scope, don't even try this diagnosis. You will get absolutely nowhere. Four channels. Oh, we see some in something interesting there. Look at that. Beautiful. Looks like a high speed three cans waking up, but that's it. That's our event. And our draw is back, gonna go back down. <coughs> so actually, I'll just pause it. Well, let's see where we're hooked up. So channel one and two, I have on high speed one and high speed two can at the DLC. That's the blue and the red pin six and pin three, just on the high side of the network. To get to the high speed three can and the medium speed can, well, I found the gateway module. You can actually see it through that gap under the steering column. There's the tag for it right there. And using the reach around move, you see a couple of piercing probes. I found the right wires. You'll have to trust me that they are the right wires. Right in there. Why is it so hard to see on camera? <laughs> the channel 3 is in high speed CAN plus. Green and blue and channel 4 is on medium speed CAN plus gray and orange. So what did we just see during this event? We saw exactly what we need to see. Right there. This is what I'm after. So high speed one, high speed two, medium speed, and look at high speed three, the green. There's some activity going on. So who was first? <laughs> who was first to wake this up? It looks like There's a little bump right there, boom, then it goes up, then something starts talking on the high speed 3 can. And through the gateway, the other three networks come online. Now an interesting experiment would be to unplug the gateway module and see if the high speed 3 can still does this thing. <clears throat> very, very interesting. You see just some random activity. And then it stops, and then it goes to sleep. Everything goes to sleep. Almost simul simultaneously. So I'll save this capture. That's our event. It lasts about 10, about 10 seconds from 4 to 16. What would be the next step? Well, we want to see what is on the high speed 3 can. <clears throat> uh, we could just try unplugging the gateway module. It, I can reach in there and unplug it. And that will isolate the networks. And then we'll see if the high speed 3 wakes up and the other ones stay asleep. Then, um, you know, that'll be a good, easy check to do. Pretty neat case study.
All right, just to demonstrate this event, I got the meter and the computer screen with a scope rolling. So you can see 65 milliamps right there. Contrast is a little, let me reduce the contrast there. You see that? Okay, now we wait. See it's going up, 73 milliamps, it should start at any second. Right there, boom, 3 amps for 10 seconds, and shut off, turn off the network. Boom, 65 milliamps. So that was really cool. Definitely correlated with this network activity. Let me try unplugging the gateway to see if just high speed three, um, basically I want to isolate the, the networks there, see what happens. All right, so gateway module is unplugged. Look at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. <clears throat> So the other three networks stay asleep, and High Speed 3 is the one that's did its thing. That's fantastic. We had the same exact draw. So same exact draw, three up to three amps, and I just want to see how long it is between these events. So the event, I started the stopwatch when the event started, and now we're gonna just wait when the next event occurs. Alright, here we go. I know it's about to happen. The amp draw went up just a hair. It's been 1 minute 30 seconds. And... Boom! Right there. 1 minute 40 seconds between these events. So basically, every... <laughs> every 1 minute 40 seconds this thing draws about three amps for 10 seconds. How about that?